I have a hunch. Not that kind. Arsenal's defeat to Newcastle on Saturday was extremely disappointing for a number of reasons, but I wonder if it might have been avoided. I'm a massive fan of Mikel Arteta, in case you hadn't noticed, so I'm probably biased and at risk of over-indexing his intelligence. But I want to put a theory to you, and it's surrounding the signing of Durian Timber. I think when we signed him, it was because Mikel saw something coming, and we might miss him more than we care to admit. This season, Arsenal have faced a number of very stubborn low and mid blocks. This brilliant data viz from John Ollington breaks it down perfectly. Yellow is last season, blue is this season, and it's all compared to the league ranking first being over to the right. We've dropped down in terms of non-penalty expected goals quite significantly, our touches in the opposition box per 90 has decreased, and we're taking less shots. But our field tilt has actually increased. Field tilt FC, baby. We're spending more time in the opposition half, but we're finding it harder to do anything with it. From the way Fulham defended their half spaces to the switch in pressing structure I spoke about in this video to Man City's compactness, teams have been particularly focused and prepared out of possession against us this season, which I think is basically the main factor leading to our chance creation issues. Against Newcastle, we saw a similar situation. A lot of time spent in their half without a great amount done with the ball. When you're trying to break down a stubborn block, there's a number of principles and tactics that you can use to do that. Broadly from my learning, they're separated into three categories, going through, round, or over teams. For example, there's the overload and switch, where you focus play down one side, then try and find the spare man on the other side, who's now free or isolated 1v1. There's going back to go forward, baiting the press deeper in your play in order to create spaces further up the pitch. There's the principles of width, asking your wingers to get chalk on the boots to stretch the defense. There's dynamic overlaps from the fullbacks to create overloads, so many things. But I wanna focus on third man runs and carries, specifically from deep, and how they can open up a block. The idea of the third man run is pretty simple. Two players are in combination somewhere and your player, the third man, makes a run to open up space elsewhere for them to move into, pass into, or exploit in some way. Simple, but not easy. Executing it well, timing it so it opens the space at the exact moment your teammate needs it, recognizing the situation in the first place, that is a whole different ball game. Get it? Bruh. Ball carrying too is a simple concept. Same aim, move the block around and attract defenders, asking them to jump out their holes to engage you and create space elsewhere. You know where I'm going with this. Timber is a specialist at both of those skills. He's an elite ball carrier and a third man runner, specifically on the underlap. In the handful of games he played for Arsenal, not only did we see a sharp technician with a snappy, crisp tackle and a lovely turn on the ball, but we saw someone who could have added so much to us in terms of breaking teams down and disrupting their blocks. But the key with Timber, the absolute key, is that those runs and those carries come from deep. And we have no one else in the squad, though we have a small sample size, I believe, who can do it as well as him. When these movements come from deep, it makes them way less predictable and therefore potentially more effective than your eight or your winger doing it, as the fullback is often the free or unmarked man in Arteta's system. Having someone who could consistently execute these runs with and without the ball through the block without having to drop a man back to do it would have been so useful. And his timing and ability to receive it in unconventional positions for a defender, though maybe we should begin to call them conventional now, means he would have been and will be such a threat. Last season, Arsenal didn't really have many guys, certainly in their first 11, and certainly not centrally, whose primary skill is driving with the ball or making those third man runs. Zinchenko, Erdegaard, Partey, these guys are kind of inherently pass first players. It's not to say they don't carry the ball or don't make third man runs, because they do, but they're touch heavy players. They like to, and their strength is to move the ball and manipulate the block primarily through their passing, not primarily through their movement. This season, Havertz is probably our best third man runner in what might be considered our first 11 or 12 without Timber. His timing and intelligence of his running is top, even if I want more intensity from him. But again, the key is them coming from deep, unmarked, and Havertz's starting position makes it hard to unsettle blocks in the same way. Rice can carry, and he's started to, which I'd love to see more of, but he's got a lot of other responsibilities, and I'd argue he's still pass first. So Timber's profile would have been, well, is unique. He's not dead. Tommy asu has been filling in at times, and I've been so impressed with his development from an attacking perspective. He's beginning to make fantastic off-the-ball runs and contribute a lot in terms of Arsenal's middle and final third play, as we saw against Sevilla. On that, myself and UEFA licensed coach George Vutsas actually did a whole special on Tommy Asu the other day for TDK members on YouTube and Patreon, looking at his improvements, his unique physical profile, his role, how his ability to receive the ball has changed, and so much more. You can watch it for free on Patreon and cancel if you like. But despite all that improvement, and he has improved, 
Timber is just that next level. Zinchenko is a different type of fullback than Timber, maybe more cute technically, but maybe doesn't have the physical robustness that Timber has to allow him to ride those challenges when he's driving with the ball. Your injured players obviously become world class in your head when they're out, but you do think about what could have been. And what we saw from Timber driving inside in those first few games, I think would have become a massive feature of Arsenal's play this season and may have turned a few draws into wins. There is, however, a possible other solution, Emile Smith-Rowe. A couple of years ago, Jamie Carragher said that Emile Smith-Rowe is one of the best ball carriers in the league, and I don't think he's wrong. Smith-Rowe is currently out, of course, but Arteta has confirmed that it's a matter of weeks, not months. And I think when he's back, we might be able to utilize his key strength, ball carrying. Emile, at his best, has terrific close control on the run, some of the best in the squad. Those low socks and an even lower sensor of gravity make him able to duck and weave with the best of them. And if he can combine with players in and around the box, he can become unstoppable, as we've seen. The rumor goes that he has his burst back and he's been making great strides in training. A little while ago, I spoke to someone who works on the strength and conditioning team at another Premier League club with a different knock, and they said the main concern they have with Smith Rowe from an external perspective was his cardiovascular fitness. From a non-expert perspective, obviously, but also from the outside looking in, that kind of makes sense. Smith Rowe did look a bit sluggish in his appearances last season, being substituted after coming on as a substitute against Bournemouth, though he may have had a knock. We know he's had issues with his body, but it may well be that those days are behind him and he can get back to his best. At which point, he may be able to give us something that we lost on that day back in August against Forrest. Again, he's not dead. <laughs> with this performance against Sheffield, while he struggled to influence that game on the ball, I actually thought he played a crucial role with dragging defenders around off it. Time and time again, as the ball came out to Saka or Martinelli, Smith Rowe would be on the move, buzzing around, trying to create some space centrally. It's these types of runs that Smith Rowe's body may now be capable of because he's always had the intelligence and selflessness to make. I wonder if Smith Rowe, along with Tomiyasu, is another semi-answer to that timber-shaped hole. I think Smith Rowe is perfectly capable of dropping deeper and driving with the ball, or dropping and driving through midfield off it. It's not as effective as your fullback doing it in my view, but it's an option. And that's the key word, option. I'm not suggesting timber being out equals we can't make chances. There's so many ways you can do it. It's just one aspect that I think would have been really useful. Because as well as we're doing, if I had a frustration with Arsenal this season, it would be how one note we've looked. Yes, teams have blocked us, but it feels like we're just trying the same safe passing football and patterns over and over again. We saw it at Newcastle too. Pass, pass, pass with no real execution that troubled them. Sometimes a different approach needs time and an opportunity to present itself. And I sort of don't care if it's carries or knocking it long to Havertz or shooting from outside the box. It doesn't matter. Just something different. Smith Rowe dropping or Tomiyasu driving, though not perfect replacements for what Timber could do in my view, may not lead to a goal, but it attracts defenders, might draw fouls and it upsets the block. As one of the many ways we can fix our creation issues this season, I'd love to see what Timber might have brought approximated in those different ways more and more. And if not, then fine, our other answers played out more consistently. Because the frustration is, to come back to what I said at the beginning, I think Arteta predicted this. Maybe I'm over-indexing his intelligence, as I say, too much credit, but what can Rice, Havertz and Timber all do to some degree or another? Disrupt blocks through movement, either through carrying or off the ball runs. I think Arteta saw we needed to expand our different ways of breaking teams down and acted in the summer. I think he wanted to add this specific element more to the team, but even if he didn't, I still think he knew we'd be facing more of these low and mid blocks. I love the idea of seeing more carrying more broadly, as Arsenal aren't carrying enough, in my view. In the league, Saliba's progressive carries per 90 numbers have more than halved, from 0.49 last season to 0.2. Whites have gone down from 1.89 to 1.55, Zinchenko's gone from 2.85 to 1.94, so on and so on. Whichever solution you prefer, I know it's not easy, but I'd like to see us try different ways. We are in a very good position in the league, top of our Champions League group, and you could argue, why am I complaining? But I do look at that chart I showed you in the beginning and worry a bit. I mean, I'm an Arsenal fan. I've got to worry at some point. Hopefully, after this fairly favourable run of fixtures coming up, we'll be having very different conversations come December. If you like The Different Knock and want to see more, you can access our bonus content on Patreon and YouTube memberships for just £3 a month.